This just in, American pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly announced on Twitter, we are excited to announce insulin is free now. Good news as the price of insulin has had a rapid increase in America. The price of insulin more than tripled. Federal lawsuit accuses the three insulin manufacturers of conspiring to raise their prices. In fact, this was just one of many strange tweets from verified accounts that ensued last week. We saw Nestle tweet, we steal your water and sell it back to you, LOL. Donald Trump saying, Black Lives Matter. An American girl, Felicity owned slaves. I'm not even lying, look it up. Elon Musk even tweeted, starting today, we'll begin offering Twitter Gold, a free subscription that gets you yearly family vacations and nightly dinners with me. If your name is Grimes, please come back. I love you. This chaos stemming from Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter and the modifications he's made on the platform so far. Even Elon's biggest supporters began to question the billionaire's strategy. Hey guys, uh, I wanted to hop on here real quick to talk about Twitter because I made a video a year ago about how I cut down my Twitter usage to like twice a month. Sometimes it's even less. So I had such a love-hate relationship with the platform. It was fun and really addicting because it felt like it was the only place where the most unreachable people were reachable. It was also very cool to see everyone's thoughts about the news in real time. The downside was that place was just negative, plainy. Uh, so for the sake of my sanity, I reduced my Twitter usage. I still like Twitter, but it was the best decision I've ever made. But I've been hearing about the chaos, which is why today we are going to have some fun, look at Elon Musk's strategy and kind of theorize whether this platform is going to rise to the top or end in a disastrous dumpster fire. Okay, so all social media platforms have this problem. Um, ever since their conception, they've had trouble trying to figure out the line between free speech and profitability. Like it or not, uh, these platforms are a business and it requires capital to keep them running. And a big portion of that capital comes from advertisers. The issue with this is these guys can come and go at their own will. One viral piece of content that they don't like can and have caused them to leave before. This instability, just not great for running a business. But on the other side of that, if you become too safe and prioritize advertisers, no one is going to create on your platform. It'll feel too childish and rigid. So even though YouTube does have its problems, trust me, I've been through it. Right now though, it is looking like out of all the social media platforms, it is the best and most fair to creators. And it seems like they found the most fair balance between free speech and profitability. In comes Elon to come and solve this problem for Twitter. Now, his solution is to bring in a new stream of revenue separate from advertisers by making it possible for all users to purchase verification for $8 a month. Now, that's not very new in terms of subscription services and social media. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube all have some sort of this subscription phase, but Twitter is the only one that allows people to purchase verification. That's weird. As expected, the results were very chaotic, with individuals willing to pay $8 just for a little mayhem. BP tweeted, just because we killed the planet doesn't mean we can't miss it. Sad crying face. Roblox saying, we're adding sex to Roblox. Ben Shapiro said, Matt Walsh won't stop calling me and talking about my genitalia. Joe Biden, I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. George W. Bush, I miss killing Iraqis. Ugh, dude. Lockheed Martin, we will begin halting all weapons sales to Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States until further investigation into their record of human rights abuses. We are LM. And then you have Nintendo posting Mario flipping the bird. And so after all that chaos, we saw a lot of brands scrambling to make clarification tweets that this wasn't them. Um, a lot of people, along with myself though, thought that this was hilarious. But unfortunately, it did have some real life consequences and caused some of these brands to take a dive. 
And now you're like, this is easy. There's an easy solution for this. It may sound very obvious, and it can be summed up by this tweet here by Sam Shepper. Just make the paid verification badge a different color. Make it green to indicate money. It shouldn't be this hard. It really shouldn't be that hard, but in my opinion, that's not happening. It is logical for sure, but Twitter has already attempted to win over users by improving their utility. For around five bucks prior to Elon, they've already offered Twitter Blue with perks like uploading videos in 1080p, undoing tweets, and other custom features. If Elon really wanted to, he would have just added to those perks. That doesn't seem to be the route that he's taking though. Instead, He's allowing, and still allowing anyone, to purchase verification. That's indistinguishable from the original. This indicates to me, Twitter doesn't really have a utility issue, or at least doesn't have one users are willing to pay for to fix. It has a marketing issue. It is struggling to get users back onto their platform, or get new users back into their platform. According to a report by Reuters, Twitter is struggling to keep its most active users who are vital to the business engaged. These heavy tweeters account for less than 10% of monthly overall users, but generate 90% of all tweets and half of global revenue. That's crazy. Half of global revenue. Musk himself tweeting, most of these top accounts tweet rarely and post very little content. Is Twitter dying? Now the report doesn't say why these users have stopped tweeting, but I think this tweet by Andrew Schultz sums it up. The cost of tweeting your thoughts on Twitter is too high for celebs. Concerns of getting canceled turn them into passive users. And the fact that these tweeters have been in decline since the pandemic, to me, kind of corroborates Schultz's claim. So if public figures are afraid to tweet for that reason, that's not gonna be fixed by improved utility. And if these figures leave the platform, there goes a big portion of your users. Again, Twitter is supposed to be a platform where it feels like you are able to talk to and reach people who are normally unreachable. So Elon has to figure out a way to get users back on the site to make up for that loss of half the global revenue. Obviously, there is no putting a stop to cancel culture unless we throw social media away in the garbage. So it's gonna be hard to get these users or these people back on. However, there has been one thing that usually gets people to come back and log on to their Twitter again. Drama. Yeah, we saw that in 2017 when Trump became president and started tweeting the craziest things. Twitter's daily usage increased to about 12%. Now, it seems as if today Musk has taken that dramatic role on himself, tweeting about firing people, rehiring people, missing Bernie Sanders, firing employees who criticize him online. And you know, there's probably so much more that I'm missing, but it's also a two-way street. By making such outrageous tweets, it's causing a lot of users with large followings to respond to him, thereby engaging their audience. This comes from Musk himself, so it's probably going to be a little bit biased. He reports, use of Twitter continues to rise. One thing is for sure, it isn't boring. Hit all-time high of active users today. Okay, so who knows if this chaos is purposeful or not, but it is garnering attention. And honestly, I wouldn't put it past him. From promoting a meme coin to his cyber truck disaster, his fans pretty much eat up whatever he's all about at the moment, even if it seems like a disaster. Maybe that was a little too hard. <laughs> now that he's got all the attention back on Twitter, how does he convert that into revenue? Improving the platform. No, we already tried that. Attaining attention off of drama is not enough. Going back to that Trump example, even though his tweets were able to increase daily usage, Twitter only grew by 2 million users. That was its slowest quarter that year. For comparison, Facebook grew by 72 million. So Elon's gotta work fast. Let me tell you right now, growth isn't happening by letting people upload in 4K. Instead, I believe he is going the route of selling status. That check mark the best way to explain this point is by looking at why people buy brand name items when there's a cheaper version probably manufactured at the same factory right next to it yet people are willing to pay a premium just for the logo 
They are buying for the lifestyle behind the brand. They are buying for the perception that comes with wearing that item. Why else are knockoffs a profitable industry? People want to buy that symbol even if it's fake. As far as I know, no one has ever been able to do this with digital assets. They've tried with NFTs, but there hasn't been anything that's universal, where by wearing something automatically, it associates that person with being rich, like a nice car or watch. There's nothing like that in the digital space, except the check mark. Though not expensive, selling the check mark achieves this, sort of. Verification is hard to get, so there's rarity involved. And for years now, it's been associated with people that are quote unquote important. Influencers, brands, government officials, People do perceive your account differently if you're verified. It may seem like a reductionist answer, but maybe people are willing to pay for this. And I'm sure other people are also buying this for the meme. Now, whether this attracts more people to Twitter, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it will, but it may, for the time being, introduce more of a stream that is separate from advertisers. This is why I think they have not been differentiating someone that is verified by subscribing to Twitter Blue and someone that was verified by providing whatever documents they needed to be verified. You will only see the difference by actually clicking on the individual's profile, but they still share the same symbol. Now, obviously, I could be wrong since they are relaunching Twitter Blue on the 29th, so before this video is even recorded. Regardless, there's no doubt in my mind that this first iteration was all to stir up some drama. Improving Twitter's utility alone will not grow the platform. Now, overall, uh, it's hard to tell whether this will work or not. Uh, we'll see once he launches Twitter Blue. I did watch the video by Marquez Brownlee where his idea was to give more perks to creators, thereby incentivizing them to create more content on Twitter, which leads to more people visiting the site. Now that may help, but I visit Twitter more for people's thoughts on news in real time, the drama, the hot takes. And I think that may change the landscape of Twitter entirely. If I do watch videos, it has to be the creator ranting about something just on their phone or like a random viral video that a normal person took. I mean, it is kind of corny to say, but for me, it really is about citizen journalism. Yes, you have to do your due diligence to see if it's fake, but I'm coming on here to see stuff mainstream news hasn't reported just yet. I'm coming on here to see everyone's opinions on it. How do you even monetize that? Now, the only successful model I've seen is how sites like Wikipedia does it. Just straight up ask for a donation. That way, that capital is just influenced by the users that use Twitter. And since Elon is trying to make it about free speech, I don't see why users wouldn't donate to this cause. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this topic. I am sick. That's why I sounded weird this whole video. But that's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.